Hey guys, Caitlin here. And for this week's episode, I wanted to touch base on any type of ocular emergency you may see in the emergency department. Um, there's a great logarithm you can find on UpToDate that can take you through any type of eye injury um, and the questions you should be asking and the procedures and or follow-up um, workup that you need to do for certain symptoms um, that you can use. And But I just want to give you a quick overview of some of the emergencies, so let's get started. So the first thing I want to talk about is ocular burns or ocular chemical burns in the emergency department. A lot of people will come in um, saying they were splashed in the eye by some sort of chemical and now their eye is in a lot of pain. So the main state of treatment here is um, irrigation and um, sometimes you need to irrigation for many hours, usually 30 to 60 minutes um, is pretty adequate and you can do so um, by the washing stations, you can get a nasal cannula, stick it up to an IV and put this on the eyes and allow irrigation of the eyes that way. Um, some emergency departments have Morgan lenses so you can place these lenses in these patients eyes and that allows for irrigation. Um, and then you will want to serially monitor these patients every hour. Um, allow the irrigation to stop. Um, check with pH paper in each epicanthal fold of the eye, so in the two upper and two lower, and make sure the pH has stabilized. Um, and do not stop irrigation until the pH has stabilized. And obviously, contact ophthalmology and get them on board as soon as these patients have been have started their irrigation process to keep monitoring them in the emergency department. The next thing I want to talk about is orbital compartment syndrome. So these patients will come in usually with a history of trauma to the eye and on exam you will see that their eye is bulging out, they'll have proptotic nature, um, they'll have some periorbital swelling, their eyelids will be rock hard. Um, you may notice some afferent pupillary defect and they may be complaining of decreased visual acuity. In these patients you obviously need to contact ophthalmology and if they can't get down there in the next couple minutes um, you need to do an emergent lateral canthotomy with inferior canthal lysis and you can look up this procedure on YouTube um, it's a pretty crazy procedure I've only seen it done once um, but making sure you are able to do this in the absence of an ophthalmologist is very important in the emergency department so this next picture shows a Good example of orbital compartment syndrome, and you can definitely see the proptosis here. Um, there's some conjunctival hemorrhage. Um, they definitely have the rock hard eyelids, is what I was talking about. Um, and they probably have a lot of decreased visual acuity. And this person has um, a lot of ecchymosis surrounding their black eye, probably secondary to the trauma that caused all of this. The next thing I want to talk about that's very similar to orbital compartment syndrome is a globe rupture. And these patients, again, will come in with some sort of trauma to the eye, maybe even a foreign body to the eye. Um, these patients will all have obvious eye pain, afferent pupillary de defect, um, and decreased vision loss, but they won't be as proptotic. They won't have as much um, swelling around the eye. They won't have the rock hard eyelids, as what I mentioned before. Um, and their pupil um, may be teardrop um, in shape, and they may have a positive Sedel sign. So look for these um, on exam, and but the treatment's kind of the same thing. You need to get Optho on board immediately because they will need to go into emergent surgery. Um, don't try and remove any type of foreign body. Um, keep the patient very still and try not to increase their blood pressure, all the above. So um, that is globe rupture. So this first picture shows an open globe rupture with the concomitant teardrop pupil that I was talking about. And then this next picture shows how a small perforation will cause a clearing of the dense fluorescine that appears to be streaming away from the perforation site. This is the positive Sedel sign I was talking about. The next thing I want to talk about is a retinal detachment. Um, these patients will come in with a lot of complaints of visual changes, um, blurry vision, specks of light, halos, 
Um, and if your patient's complaining of any of these at all, you need to do an ultrasound of the eye to look for a retinal detachment. Um, so you can have like superior and inferior retinal detachments. And based on where the attachment is placed, um, you are going to want to position the patient um, either upright if it is a inferior detachment or um, lay them back in supine position if it is a superior detachment and obviously again contact ophthalmology. The next thing I want to talk about is an acute angle glaucoma. Um, these patients will come in with a sudden onset of um, unilateral eye pain. Um, their eye will be red their pupil will be fixed and dilated. They may have a little hazy cornea. Um, they may complain of some halo, some vision changes. Um, and then their intraocular pressure, um, which is measured by a tonal pin, will be greater than 20. Um, so these patients are going to obviously need ophthoconsole again and start them on acetazolamide, um, timolol, uh, beta blocker drops, and then alpha-2 agonists, alpha blockers, um, anything and everything until Optho gets down there to help in the situation. So here you can see an acute angle closure glaucoma. The conjunctival vessels are dilated, especially near the corneal, which has caused that ciliary flush, and the cornea is slightly hazy. Um, this is a fixed pupil. Um, and usually these patients come in with a sudden onset of this. And that's it, guys. Thanks for listening. Um, I hope you enjoyed this quick recap on ocular emergencies. Um, see you next week.